Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. And uh, our main speaker today, because he's got another appointment after this, is uh, the guy that won the debate last night, Rick Wyatt. Seventy-seven town visits. Uh, I said this the other night. There is a hunger out there for some change. Uh, there's a hunger out there to get away from business as usual. And I keep saying, uh, my campaign has been anything but business as usual. We 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 put out three music videos. Uh, we've been to every town in South Dakota, not once, but we're on our second time through. And I think we're, we're going to win this because we're talking about things that mean something to real people. And I get this, uh, you know, I keep getting hammered that, you know, uh, I'm too, uh, too liberal for South Dakota. And, uh, you know, I know I'm, I may be speaking to the, to the choir here, but, you know, I, I, I don't know that, you know, define liberalism any way you want. I just want to talk about the issues. And when I say, you know what, if 140,000 people in South Dakota like Medicare, and you know at least half of them are Republicans, right? Do the votes, you know, voter registration. Why can't we give that to everybody else in this state and in this country? You give them a choice. Give them a choice between big health insurance that Mike Brown sells and Medicare. And you know what? They're coming after me. And it's not unexpected. Big insurance knows I've got them in the crosshairs. They have me in their crosshairs. All right? But it's a fight and it's an honest debate we need to have in this country. Because frankly, the Affordable Care Act isn't affordable enough for a lot of people in this country. And it could have been better if the big health insurance companies and their lobbyists and their political contributions hadn't gotten in the way of the public option, the Medicare option. And you know what? We wouldn't be having this debate today because I think people would be somewhat more satisfied, uh, probably a lot more satisfied. Sometimes I kind of minimize, it would have been a hell of a lot more satisfied <laughs> if we had Medicare as an option in this country. And that's just the honest to God's truth. Um, you know, I, I've been uh, hammered for wanting to stand up for people who uh, might get another dollar and a quarter an hour in their paycheck for every hour that they work. You know, eight, you know 725 to 850? I mean, give me a break. You know, people are working full time in South Dakota, 40 hours a week, and they still use food stamps to put food on their table. No one working 40 hours a week should be living in poverty and eligible for food stamps. better than, than that, and, you know, and that's why I say these issues aren't liberal uh, or conservative. To me, they're just, as my one opponent likes to say, good old South Dakota common sense. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I really do believe that we are on our way to victory here on November 4th. And, you know, there are so many other things I could talk to you about. I, I uh, you know, I just uh, am really, really excited about where we're at in this campaign when everybody in the country, the political class, the, the punditry, the national press, just said, forget it, South Dakota is a lost cause. I mean, you know, really, frankly, a lost cause. They don't know the state like Jim Aberast knows the state, or like Tom Daxter knows the state, or like Tim Johnson knows the state, like Dick Knight knew the state, like George McGovern knew the state. You gotta get out there, you gotta talk to the people. And 
you got to speak from your heart. You got to look them in the eyes, and you just got to give it to them straight. I, I, I will tell you, common sense, real South Dakota common sense, trumps political party. It does. And people know they have a real sense of what's right and what's fair in this state. And that's how Jim put it together. That's how George put it together. That's how Dick and I put it together. And that's how I'm putting it together for November 4th. We are going to win. I'm telling you. Right now. But there's a caveat. If we don't get the vote out, we're not going to win. And, you know, I am trying to do whatever I can to fire up people in the state. I was in Pine Ridge and Rosebud. I had a great trip. Uh, what's that say? Get your... <laughs> I won't say that. You finish that one for me. Get your donkey. Yeah, I know. Get your donkey to the holes and vote. But, I mean, I was... $10. I was in... $10. Shameless plug. I was in uh, Pine Ridge and uh, Rosebud. I went to the Spirit Camp, near Ideal, to stand with the folks out there who've been living in teepees and, and working out of a mess tent since uh, the beginning of March. Um, you know, I just came back from Mitchell, had a wonderful uh, visit, went up and down the main street there, shaking hands with people who haven't made up their minds yet, uh, and were offering up, boy, you know, you bothered to come into my business today. I was undecided, you got my vote. I've heard that story a thousand times. And that's why I think that this uh, election is going to be a good election uh, for Democrats. We have got to, uh, we need to take it back. And we really do. It's pretty simple. We really need to take it back. There are a lot of people, and I see, uh, I see the hope. And this, is, this is really, this is where it gets inside of you when you've been out there traveling to all these towns. I've seen the hope in the, in the eyes. If people want to believe again that their government can be on their side. But they've lost faith. And they want to hope that, you know, that this is real. That I'm just not going to, you know, take their vote and go out and do what everybody else does when they get to Washington. And there's a hunger, you know, really a real hunger for change. I, I have to tell you, the, the, the smallest town, and I can't talk forever, I know that, right? But, you know, the smallest town, I have to, I'll leave you with this. Do I have to go? Okay. The smallest town I have been to is Iona. Does anybody have a clue where Iona is? I do. All right. It is north of Winter. I was passed around those four people that lived there for a <laughs> well, I got news for you. There's only one now. <laughs> and I met her. Her name is Teresa Ellis. And this is a, just a great, I mean, this is why this has been such a wonderful experience for me. Um, we were shooting a part of that music video that you might have seen recently that has gone viral, I might add. We've got close to 50,000 views on YouTube. It's called Big Wheel. And if I had brought my guitar, I'd sing it to you. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and uh, we were filming a little piece of that. I wanted to get a nice, typical South Dakota country road uh, where I could play my guitar and walk, and my son Nick, who, oh, by the way, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but we've been accused by the other side that we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this music video that went viral, right? Hundreds of thousands. And that Tom Steyer and Larry Lessig are all financing this because it's, you know, it's a slick, slick ad, and it's, you know, this, that, and the other. My son did that on his Max. donate their time, and we recorded it in the basement of Boyd Bristow's home. That's how we put that together. But so, I'm out there playing my guitar, right, walking down the road, a country road, and there was a house way in the, you know, we tried to get away from it because we wanted to look really country. And I'm sure, I mean, I have to say, it was like Gladys Kravitz must have had the, uh, the, the fun, 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 binoculars out there wondering what the heck is going on. Because, you know, you got movie camera, you know, and you got a truck, and I'm walking with a guitar, and, and, you know, in the country. And she just could not stand to not know what was going on. So, and she came out finally, and she had to walk about a quarter of a mile to get to us. And, and she said, what, 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 what is going on? And, 
and she, and she goes, who are you? Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and I, well, I said, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Rick Wyland, and I'm running for the United States Senate. And I could tell she was disappointed. <laughs> she said, oh, I thought it was maybe Burl Hager. <laughs> She said, I thought it might have been Merle Hager doing a country music video here in Iona. They haven't had that much excitement in Iona, I'm sure, in a very long time. But I said, no, I'm Rick Vile, I'm running for the U.S. Senate. And, uh, you know, uh, she goes, what party are you? And I said, well, I'm a Democrat, thinking, well, that probably, you know, the excitement. She goes, good. <laughs> What can I do to help? I think she wanted to be in my music video. But uh, I said, you know, I'm asking everybody to give me nine bucks. And she said, stop by the house when you're done. And I did. We, we finished the shoot and we went to her house and she comes out. I knocked on the door, she comes out with a $10 bill and I went down to grab a wine. And she said, you keep the change. <laughs> And I said, thank you, Teresa. And, uh, and uh, you know what? So what I'm telling people today, today to do, because you've all given at least $10, I know you have. We, we have been very fortunate at the end of this uh, campaign uh, for the communities uh, around the country, the progressive communities that agree with us on the issues, know that South Dakota uh, you know, has sent some incredible people to Washington. Uh, and is on the course to do that again. So we have, we have done really well, I'm telling you. We have enough money, never enough, but enough to finish this race the way I need to, to be able to win. So now, I'm asking you to get, not give me nine dollars, but get me nine votes. Nine votes. So, and it shouldn't be nine votes among you in here, it's nine votes in your neighborhoods, in your schools, in your businesses, nine votes. If everybody brings nine votes to the polls, gets them voted early, we will win. I am absolutely confident we will win. We need volunteers for election day. We need people to make phone calls. We don't have that traditional Aberast, Stavrianos, Governor Dashel, GOTV operation of days gone past, where we actually had people knocking on everybody's door. You know, calling and polling, uh, using poll watchers. I know that whole that whole shtick because I worked on those campaigns. We don't have that kind of operation, but we can make phone calls. We can get people rides if we know they need to get to the polls. We can go out and vote people absentee. So you all got to get you all got to get in. You do election day, and if not election day, days before election day. Whenever you can get in, we need staff needs volunteers every night, every day, at our office, at the state party office, in order to get this thing done. So I'm pleading with you uh, now. We're, we're in the next phase. Let's get this vote out and we'll win. Anything else I need to say? That's it? Yeah, we've got folks back here to sign you up if you want. Okay, we've got sign-up sheets back here, and I have to, I have to run, but, um, you know, I literally have to run. So is that it? Did I... Okay, we got it all. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Come on, Soda Pop. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on.